turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a conversation between a printing company employee and a customer. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matrix Printing. I'm John Smith. How can I help you? Good afternoon. I'm here to reprint a brochure for our hotel. There are some pages that need revising. The customer says the brochure sample needs revising. So, brochure has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matrix Printing. I'm John Smith. How can I help you? Good afternoon. I'm here to reprint a brochure for our hotel. There are some pages that need revising. Sure. How may I address you? Oh, I'm Mary Jane from Central Hotel Chains. Nice to meet you. I've got samples of the previous version. I assume it is your company's advertising brochure. Yes. What exactly is the problem? Well, it was printed the year before, so some of the information is already out of date. There are also a couple of problems with the layout. Firstly, the letters of the address on the front page are far too small. It's hard to see when glancing at the cover. How big do you need it to be? Increase the letters by three font sizes. Just a minute. Let me take notes of your requirements. OK, what else needs changing? The information regarding the pool should be deleted because it is currently under renovation and is not available. So, all of the relevant descriptions on page 2 should be removed? What do we replace it with? We can't just leave the whole page blank. Just fill it in with the introduction of our newly opened gym. I've included all the relevant information here in this flash drive. Let me check. Um, I see. No problem then. What is also bothering us is that the description under the top photos on page 4 is incorrect. The word lounge needs to be replaced with reception. Fully noted. Is that all? No, there is more. Turn to page 5. We feel that showing merely the picture of our exterior and interior decoration does not fully represent the appeal of our hotel. On second thought, we've decided to use a picture with the view of the hotel. Do you have the original copy of the picture? Yes, it is also enclosed in the flash drive. OK. We'll re-edit the whole layout of the photos. Great. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Let's turn to the next page. Yes. What's wrong with that? It seems perfectly fine to me. At first sight it seems fine, but according to the feedback of the customers, the prices do not stand out. So, we want to change the print from black to red to make it pop out. OK. I've made notes of all of your requests. Is there anything else? I appreciate it. Just one final request. Could you translate the whole brochure into Spanish? We have customers worldwide, you know, especially those from Latin countries. No problem. What about other languages, like Japanese, 
Chinese or German. These are our most popular target languages. I have to ask the manager about the Chinese version. There's been a surging number of Chinese clients during recent years. However, we don't need German or Japanese translations, as we currently don't have many customers from those two countries. Sure. Just keep me updated. So, roughly, when can we get the revised print? We need it before the end of July. It's late June now. Roughly, it'll take three weeks to re-edit. So it will definitely be ready before the deadline. Great. To where shall we send the samples? The address is number 9 Green Drive, Clifton, NY21300. How do you spell Clifton? C-L-I-F-F-T-O-N, Clifton. And the telephone number? It's 9030366020. Also, if you have any further questions, you can reach me through this number. OK. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. You will hear a guide talking about a tourist program. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Listen carefully to the first part of the talk and answer questions 11 to 14. Welcome to all of you. Can everyone see me and hear me? Good. My name's Cathy and I'm here to tell you about the special programme of events going on here at the Royal Observatory. Yes, it's Doors Open Day here in Edinburgh. And we're delighted that you have chosen to make this very special building part of your own Open Doors Day experience. Now, I'll make a start with giving you some background information about the Doors Open event. Doors Open takes place every year in September and the observatory is one of the many buildings, 112 of them in fact, that open their doors to visitors for one weekend. And yes, there's absolutely no charge. It's all completely free. The observatory has been involved in this event for more than 20 years. And every year, we attract more and more visitors, like you, who want to find out more about great buildings in the city. And hopefully, you'll leave with a better understanding of the universe too. OK, now let's run through today's programme of events. There are many activities to choose from, so make sure you make the most of your visit. Now, there will be planetarium shows throughout the day. Now, these will run four times, both today and tomorrow, Sunday. These are popular, so please note that we're operating a booking system for these shows. Tickets for the two shows we're running this morning, the first showing at 10.30 and the second, at 11.30, will be available on a first-come, first-served basis, here at the information point. Tickets for the two afternoon shows at 2pm and then at 3pm will be released later on at midday. So booking is essential as spaces go very quickly. Now you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20.
Now listen to the next part of the talk and answer questions 15 to 20. We also have some special tours of the observatory available. These include a tour of the telescope dome and visitors will even have the opportunity to get onto the roof. I hope that those of you who are interested are wearing your most comfortable shoes and that you can keep up the pace. It will be worth the effort of climbing all these stairs. You'll have stunning views over the city when you reach the top. Now, for those of you who want to take things at a more leisurely pace, there will be an opportunity to visit the Crawford Collection and learn about the instruments that have been built here and there will also be some items from the collection on view. For those of you who don't already know, the Crawford Collection is an astronomical library. And not only that, it ranks as one of the most important astronomical libraries in the world. You are promised a real treat here. And it's great to have so many younger visitors here today. Now, we have a craft workshop for children here in the visitor centre where they can make their very own model of a telescope and colour their very own planet. Please note that all children must be accompanied by an adult. So, as you can see, it's a pretty full timetable and there's a lot going on. Now, any questions? That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear three students, Ben, Jane, and Tom, having a discussion about their architecture and design studies course. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 21 to 25. So, Tom, did you manage to get all your reading done? Yes, Ben, I did. What about you, Jane? Me too, though it took much longer than I thought it would. Yeah, some of those dissertations are really long, aren't they? Mm. Mm. I'm not looking forward to having to write mine. Well, that's not till next year. So, shall we compare thoughts about our reading? Hmm. Let's start with 20th century architecture. I thought it was pretty impressive. There was quite a bit of detail. Yeah, all very relevant. I enjoyed the pictures, the diagrams and photos. Hmm, they were quite strange. Not what you'd expect to find in a dissertation, hmm. but very helpful. Whereas sometimes I couldn't really follow the arguments. Yes, a bit of a mixed bag, really. While modern construction was very serious and thorough, wasn't it? Indeed. Actually, it was rather dense. I didn't find it particularly easy to read either. The index was excellent, though, so I used that to guide me around. I still think it was a bit high level. I certainly wouldn't have wanted to try and cope with it in the first year. No. That's not who it's aimed at, of course. Mm. What about steel, glass and concrete? Not the world's most interesting title, of course. <laughs> Again, the index was helpful. Though I think we could have done with more photos. There weren't really enough to support what he was saying in places. Yeah, but what he was saying was easy to follow, wasn't it? He takes you through step by step. It was hard to believe it had been translated. It seemed very natural. Mm. Actually, it was better written than the next one. 
the space we make. But we're supposed to be thinking about architectural ideas, not being literary critics. <laughs> I like that one. Really? I just didn't think it covered the whole situation.、Mm. It didn't put the question of housing into the context of the time. You mean how in the fifties economic austerity limited the finances available, while a growing population needed housing quickly? Exactly. Again, I think you're asking too much of these dissertations.、Mm, perhaps you're right. Well, I did like change and tradition. Anyway, very focused. Yes, although I did think it was oddly arranged in some ways. When you went to the index to track something down, you couldn't necessarily find what you wanted. I know what you mean, but I have to say, I'd be very proud if I'd written any of these. True, <laughs> and you will next year. Now you have some time to look at questions twenty-six to thirty. Now listen to the rest of the conversation, and answer questions twenty-six to thirty. Never mind next year. It's this year that's the problem. I'm never going to get this assignment done. Yes, you are. Come on, let's make a plan for you.、Oh, please, I'm just not sure where to go from here. I could look at city plans, study the layout of housing developments. I think you need a closer focus. The approach to small houses won't necessarily tell you what you want to know. You'd be better to concentrate on large private houses. Study the drawings of those. Okay, though I don't know how much useful detail I'll be able to get from the kinds of plans that are easily available from that period.、Mm, it's true; they can be limited.、Mm. But what you could do as a next stage is go onto the web. There's loads of useful stuff there. More detailed plans, you mean? Well, I was thinking more of illustrations, that kind of thing. Do a search for window designs. I'm sure you'll find some good ones. I agree, and not just online. See what you do find there, and then for your next step, check both campus libraries. I think you'll be able to get hold of books which will give you further information, and you need to know more about typical furniture of the time. This is all very helpful. Thanks, guys. I'm beginning to think I should be able to get something done for Dr. Forbes after all. At least I can see I'll be in a position to tell him the section headings. Well, a bit more than that would be better. Put your outline plan together and give him that to look at. Hmm. Yes. But I'll still need to keep reading, won't I? Yeah. <laughs> Once Dr. Forbes has okayed what you've done at that point, you could then go and see Dr. Gray. He's very approachable, and I'm sure he'd be happy to provide you with further references. And then you could take it from there. That'd be really useful. Well. Thanks again. Let me get you both another coffee. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Listen to the following lecture carefully, and complete the sentences with no more than three words. First, you have some time to read the questions. Now, listen to the lecture. These days, we know a lot about contaminated air, contaminated water, and so on. We know that smoke, chemical substances, and dust particles pollute our environment. We're not so familiar with the concept of pollution from noise, and especially with its psychological effects. Generally, the physical effects are not surprising. Partial or complete deafness can result from excessive noises. Airports, some factories, even some discos. But did you know that it's possible to kill a person with the right or wrong noise?
Psychologists now believe that noise has a considerable effect on people's attitudes and behavior. Experiments have proved that in noisy situations, even temporary ones, people behave more irritably and less cooperatively. In more permanent noisy situations, many people cannot work hard and they suffer from severe anxiety and instability, as well as other psychological problems. However, psychologists distinguish between sound and noise. Sound is measured physically in decibels. Noise cannot be measured in the same way because it refers to the psychological effect of sound and its level of intensity depends on the situation. Thus, for passengers at an airport who expect to hear aeroplanes taking off and landing, there may be a lot of sound, but not much noise. That is, they're not bothered by the noise. By contrast, if you're at a concert and two people behind you are whispering, you feel they're talking noisily, even if there is not much sound. You notice the noise because it affects you psychologically. Both sound and noise can have negative effects. But what is important is if the person has control over the sound. People walking down the street with stereo earphones listening to music that they enjoy are receiving a lot of decibels of sound, but they're probably happy hearing sounds which they control. On the other hand, people in the street without stereo earphones must tolerate a lot of noise which they have no control over. It is noise pollution that we need to control in order to help people live more happily. Listen to the following talk about man and apes, and then complete the sentences with no more than three words. First, you have some time to look at the questions. Now, listen to the talk and answer questions one to six. Man has always been interested in apes because they are at the same time so like him and so unlike him. In their basic anatomy or body structure, they are very similar and for this reason they are both classified as primates, the highest form of animal. They also resemble each other in having hands and feet instead of claws like cats or hooves like horses. Likewise, neither has a tail. Both men and apes have large brains compared to their body size, and this helps again to distinguish them from other species of animals. But compared to the chimpanzee, for example, man's brain is four times as large. Like man, apes can use tools. For example, an ape may pick up a stick and put it in an ant's nest to make the ants come out. Similarly, apes have been known to make tools, for example, by breaking off branches to use as sticks. Man, however, is quite different. In fact, unique among animals because he can make a plan and then make a tool by following that plan. All human beings everywhere have a language, and there are thousands of different languages in the world. All these languages are equally complex, and they are very different from the cries of apes and other animals. Finally, we can use fire-making to differentiate men from apes. Man has possessed the secret of making fire for thousands of years. In contrast, Neither apes nor any other animals possess this secret. <laughs>